Dolphins fans, I got to give you a round of applause. I doubted you a little bit, Chat Sports. We didn't know if you could do it, but you got to 500 subs very, very quickly. Your next challenge, let's get to 1,000 new subs to make this a full-time channel because YouTube tells us, wait a minute, Dolphins fans, 1,000 of them, if you can get to that, we'll consider it a real channel. If you haven't already, subscribe to our Dolphins Only YouTube channel. You can see it below, chatsports.com slash Dolphins TV. Trademark Sports, you're up here on this Dolphins mailbag. One of my trademarks, if you don't have a picture, I'm going to tell you to get one. Who's the week one starter, Tua or Fitzpatrick, and who starts more games in 2020? So right now, I would say coming out, Fitzpatrick is the starter, but that is only because we haven't been able to see Tua. And I think if this is a normal offseason with normal preseason games, Tua would be the week one starter. But that's why this is a serious question, because this is an offseason like we've never seen before. One thing that we have seen, though, is Fitz, some Fitz magic, in Miami. Now, I know a lot of people rip on him, but I think he is one of the most fun quarterbacks in the league last year, showed that he could win some games when, well, Josh Rosen couldn't. And as much as I love Fitzy, I still think that Tua should be the week one starter if he is fully healthy, and I think that he is going to end up starting more games. Now, I saw a lot of the comments where we asked for some of these questions. People said, well, Tua will come in after the bye. I don't 100% agree with that. I think that's a little bit too long of a wait. If you draft a quarterback in the top five and he's fully healthy and you have a player like Fitz who's going to back him up, I think that's where you go out and, yes, you put two up in week one. But, hey, I'm going to ask you all, who's going to start week one? Type T for Tua or I want you to type F for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I will type my F for Fitzpatrick if Tua's not healthy. If Tua's healthy, let's get it straight. He's going to end up starting. Let's go to Derek Freeman. Karen Belage uh, doesn't suck. Belage, Belage doesn't suck. Their offensive line was dog last season. So the reason why he's saying this is because last week, Tom did a video, shout out to Tom, where he said that um, Kalen Belage was, well, horrible. So what I was trying to figure out is who the heck is Karen Belage? So what I had to do is I had to go to Google. I typed in Ka Karen. Shout out to Garen. You're getting a shout out here on the Dolphins show. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, this is who Karen Bellage is. So Derek Freeman, I don't know if that's who you're looking for. If it's not, maybe you're looking for Kalen Bellage, the third running back here on the Dolphins' depth chart. But I'm sorry. If you can tell me these numbers aren't sucky, I'm a little bit worried of, uh, you know, your type or what you're looking for in a running back. 1.8 yards per carry. Was the Dolph Dolphins' offensive line bad last season? Yes. Did they invest in this, you know, draft and offseason? Yes. However, Galen Balazs, let's get it straight, he is not a very good running back. So, he doesn't think that he sucks. And uh, I'm going to ask you, what's your one word to, to describe Kalen Balazs? Not Karen, we're going to go with Kalen. For me, eh. And ever since he came out of Arizona State, I think that he got drafted as high as he did based on one game. One game where he ran for seven touchdowns. I think what we're seeing now is he's a little bit one-dimensional. Next question here is from Dean McRae. Remember my trademark, get a picture. Was wondering how Preston Williams is doing so far this year. This is a great question. Preston Williams is a very young and up-and-coming receiver who I think has a lot in the tank and a very, very sneaky candidate to break out. I mean, you're looking at a player who is 6'5", super talented, and actually thought fit the Dolphins offense very well last year. So if you're wondering what the update is, this is from a week ago is the latest. He's expected to be ready for week one. And when you go back and you look at the video of him tearing his ACL in early November, it's not very pretty. Even though he's not participating in on-field workouts yet, and he started the jog, it does seem like Preston Williams is going to be ready to go week one up against the New England Patriots. Say the Vikings are looking to ship Dalvin Cook away, could the Dolphins be a trade candidate? Dalvin Cook has been in multiple trade rumors because he wants to get paid. The only issue, I think, for the Miami Dolphins is, do you want to go out and pay Dalvin Cook when you've already made two moves this offseason trying to go out and get other running backs in? Matt Breida and Jordan Howard. Now, right now, I think Matt Breida is actually the more dynamic running back because Jordan Howard might be better between the tackles but does really lack in the pass-catching game. But if you're going to add Dalvin Cook, you need to be able to pay him, and he wants to get paid like a top-five running back. The numbers he first originally threw out there was like Christian McCaffrey-type money. 
let's just be real, he ain't getting that type of money. He is a very talented back, but that has struggled with injuries. If I'm the Miami Dolphins, I'm going to say this. Cook, you're a great running back, but I'm very confident in Matt Breida. I'm very confident in Jordan Howard, and respectfully, I'm going to decline because uh, I don't think it's the best option. So should Miami trade for Dalvin Cook here at Chat Sports? We want to know what you have to think. As much as I think that I have something to say, I want to know what you have to say. Why for yes and for no, I want you to scroll on down and let me know, should Miami trade for Dalvin Cook? The next question, Southern Playa 469. Okay, Bobby McCain and a second round pick for Yannick Ngakwe and start third round pick Brandon Jones at safety. So I have seen some of y'all say Brandon Jones at safety. Personally, I'm not going to throw him quite in the fire yet. Bobby McCain, second round pick for Yannick Ngakwe. Uh, not quite sure if that's going to be enough. Yes, Yannick Ngakwe is a very fun and tantalizing player, and maybe it would be an easy move from him. Going from Jacksonville, just got to go down to Miami. But with Bobby McCain, 25 tackles last season, he did struggle, though, in the passing game. So that's also what I want you to look at here. 14 targets. He gave up 11 catches, so 107 passer rating. He did have two interceptions. The young cornerback is talented, but for Jacksonville, I don't know if you really consider Bobby McCain worth that much because remember they're looking for a first round pick at least for Yannick but hey Southern play a 469 straight idea I actually do kind of dig it for the Dolphins if the Dolphins were able to pull it off yeah it'd be a pretty good move so who wins this trade type M for Miami or I want you to type J for the Jacksonville Jaguars if you want to be an overachiever if you want to let me know why you think that that's what this is all about M for Miami or J for Jacksonville go to a guy that's just got a name Jay what's going on where can I find the Dolphins channel Jay wake up my man it's chatsports.com slash Dolphins TV all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and if you know a lot of Dolphins diehard fans tell them to subscribe as well because the more subs we get the more shows we can do and YouTube basically told us until y'all get to 1,000 subs we don't consider a real channel so let's get this bad boy to 1,000 subs Let's go to Bray. Bray, B. Gates, is Jones and Howard the best cornerback duo in the National Football League? Bray, this is a great question because I'll say if Byron Jones and Xavier Howard can be fully healthy and can fully live up to the hype, I'll say, yeah, they definitely have the upside to do it. Now, you also got to throw out some other teams out there like the New England Patriots who, in my you know opinion, have the best cornerback in Stephon Gilmore and, you know, you got one of the McCourty twins. The Buffalo Bills, also a very talented team. But Xavier Howard last season battled some injuries. But in 2018, in only 12 games, it's pretty crazy. 12 pass breakups, 7 INTs. Back in 2017, when he was able to play a full 16 games, 4 interceptions. Xavier Howard makes plays. Ball hawk. Absolutely, or as Tom would say, and everyone take a drink. He's got ball skills. But Byron Jones, you spent a lot, a lot of money on the cornerback from the Dallas Cowboys. And I thought this was a pretty interesting stat. The least covered yards allowed. Byron allowed the least in the National Football League. This was a cornerbacks that played at least 500-plus snaps. So Byron Jones and Howard, one of the best cornerback duos in the National Football League. That I can agree with. But are they the best? Well, Bray, you asked the question. So for every single Dolphins fan that watches this video, or hey, maybe you're not a Dolphins fan and you stumbled across it, all good. If you do think that they have the best duo in the league, I want you to like this video right now. Gregory. Get a picture. Should the Dolphins trade for David and Joku? Also, if you don't have a picture, yeah, I'm going to tell you to get one. So David and Joku is going to be entering year four here. And when he was drafted in the first round by the Cleveland Browns, I actually like this pick a lot. The issue here is, do the Miami Dolphins really need to go out and trade for David? Now, I've seen a lot of y'all saying, Mitch, why not go out and trade for him? He's already played for you know the Miami Hurricanes, and he's a very, very talented player. The reason why he is on the trade block now in Cleveland is because they went out and paid Austin Hooper three years, $42 million. So what exactly happens to David? The reason why I'll say I wouldn't trade for Njoku is because I have extreme confidence in Mike Gusecki. Mike Gusecki, when he came out of Penn State, for those of you that don't know, I'm from central Pennsylvania. I loved Mike Gusecki because he was super, super talented. So Mike Gusecki, David Njoku, that's a great question. So I'll ask you. Who's the better tight end? Type G for Mike Gusecki or I want you to type N for David Njoku. 
For those of you out there that are saying, and Joku's the better one, then yeah, sure, maybe you make the deal. But for me, I am going to type my G in like the second. You're talking about looking like an absolute G. You're going to look like one with this Dolphins t-shirt. Go to chatsports.com slash Dolphins T. For a limited time only, you'll be able to get this shirt for $24.99. If you're wondering, wait, how exactly do I go to that link? You can find it in the comments. You can find it in the description. Hopefully, you found us, Chat Sports. It's an easy link to remember. Again, it is chatsports.com slash Dolphins T. Another question here on this Dolphins mailbag. This one's from Ian. Razivi, did I get it right? I'm not quite sure. How do you think the Dolphins will do this season? It is a great question. So you know what? Let's walk through their entire 16-game schedule. Let's just hope, and I think we could all agree, that there is a 16-game schedule. So the first four weeks, Patriots, Bills, Jags, Seahawks. Some really tough games there. Yell at me if you want. I have them going 1-3 and three to start. I know, you're going to get mad. At week five, that's another tough game, 1-4. and four. At Denver, what if I said 1-5? and five? Yeah. Chargers, Rams, I do think that they can win both of those games at home. Now, here's like a real stretch of tough games for to figure out whether or not how legit they are. At the Cardinals is a toss-up to me. I think they beat the Jets by week at the Jets. I think they win both of those games. At the Bengals, or home against the Bengals, I think they win that game as well. So the final four games here for the Dolphins. Chiefs, sorry, I don't think they're going to be able to compete with Patrick Mahomes. Patriots, they do always compete with the Pats very, very well at home. So I'm going to say that's a win. Raiders, Bills, both on the road. So my prediction for the Dolphins record, it's 7-9. and nine. So I think that they could have an upside. I mean, last season they went 5-11, and 11, and this is a team that needs to continue to get better. They have a lot of draft picks. I do think the future is bright. But in terms of going out there and being a 500 team or being a playoff caliber team, I still think that they're one year away. And also, they need to have Tua, Tua fully healthy. Speaking of Tua... Nolan, you and I are kind of thinking the same way, kind of. I feel like Tua is going to be the next Lamar Jackson, but lefty. So as much as I love Tua, and I think that he is one of the most fun prospects that came out of this year's draft, that's why the Dolphins drafted him number five overall. The only issue is with comparing him to Lamar Jackson, who just won the MVP, I don't think that they're quite the same player. Last season, Lamar, 36 touchdowns, 3,000 yards. Do I think that Tua could at some point in his career get to that? Yes, I absolutely do. The part that I don't agree with is the rushing because Lamar last season, 1,206 yards. That was an NFL record for most rushing yards by quarterback beating Michael Vick, who actually, if you're going to make a comparison, maybe because he's a lefty. The reason why I don't think that he is going to be Lamar is because here too is college stats. Only 3.2 yards per carry, only 340 yards, nine touchdowns. And when I really think the way that the Dolphins should use Tua, I know that he can scramble but he's not really a scrambling quarterback like Lamar. And with a quarterback that's dealt with a lot of issues, even going back to college, you really want to put him out there rushing the ball over 150 dimes? I know I personally wouldn't. Let Tua sling it back there in the pocket. Let's go to Justin Brown. What's up, dude? Who's going to be the breakout player this year? I would say Rakeem McMillan because in his contract, because he's in his contract year, and this is going to be his first year of being fully healthy. Justin, everyone watching, I do struggle reading, just as a FYI. So let's look at McMillan's past two seasons. As a rookie in 2018, had a bit of a breakout year, if you will. But if you know me, if you know chat sports, you don't consider rookies breakouts. Year three, though, is a very, very popular year for players to really take that breakout step because as a rookie, you're just trying to get acclimated to the NFL. Second year, you're like, okay, I'm starting to get used to this. By the third year, yeah, that's when you see breakout years. But for me, when I think of just overall breakout player, I do. I think of Mike Gusecki, the tight end, and he's got all the talent in the world. I know Ryan Fitzpatrick loves to focus on him, you know, a tight end or a wide receiver. And I also think a player like Gusecki fits very well with a guy like Tua. I'm hoping Tua is able to play all 16 games, but I'm thinking about Fitz. I'm thinking about Tua, my breakout player this year for the Dolphins. It's Mike Gusecki. So what I want you guys to do right now is go down in the comments section and let me know, a Dolphins breakout player, a player that you think is about to have a career year, that's what a breakout means. And I also don't allow rookies, so I'm going to be a little bit strict here. I'm also going to be looking down there in the comments section. Let's hit you with this deal one more time, chatsports.com slash Dolphins T. I've never been to Miami, but I have been to Florida multiple times, and I know it's warm. I also have one of these T-shirts, and I'm telling you right now, if you sweat, you're not going to be able to see them. It's a high-quality cotton. Only $24.99 Dolphins t-shirts 
limited time in the comments in the description. If you get one of these shirts, hey, let me know. Take a picture of it. I'm at Mitchell Rand 365